Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we start with our today's analysis, we have an announcement. Baiju's Exam Prep IAS has recently launched another initiative called as the Big News. This will be a short crisp analysis of some of the important topics from the civil services examination point of view. So please do like, subscribe and share these videos with your fellow aspirants. Now let's get started and look into the first question. Consider the following statement statements with respect to National Green Tribunal. The tribunal is bound by the procedure laid down under Code of Civil Procedure 1908 and by principles of natural justice. It draws inspiration from India's constitutional provision of Article 21. NGT is mandated to dispose all the cases within 12 months. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is two only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the National Green Tribunal. Let us try and understand what are these options. When we look into the first option, it says tribunal is bound by the procedure laid down under the code of the civil procedure 1908 and by the principles of the natural justice. The first part of the statement is not right, which means that it need not have to comply by the procedure given in the code of the civil procedure, but it has to give importance to the very principles of the natural justice. In fact, the NGT is also not bound by the rules of the evidence as enshrined under the Indian Evidence Act. Act of 1872. So the first statement is wrong. Now if you look into the second option, it draws inspiration from India's constitutional provision of Article 21. Article 21 speaks about right to life. For us to enjoy our right to life, what we also require is a healthy environment. So according to the Supreme Court of India, healthy environment is also an aspect of right to life. So when we speak about the NGT, it draws its inspiration from India's constitutional principle of Article 21. So the second statement is right. When we look into the third statement, NGT is mandated to dispose all the cases within 12 months. This is a wrong statement because the time that is given to NGT is not 12 months but instead it is 6 months. So the third statement is also wrong. Since the second statement is right, the answer to this would be 2 only. Now let's look into the next practice question. With respect to Vijayanagara Empire, which of the following statements is are correct? The single biggest item of import to the Vijayanagara Empire was horses. Persian traveller Abdur Razak visited Vijayanagara during the rule of Devaraya 1. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is 1 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the Vijayanagara Empire. Let us try and understand what are these options. When we look into the first option, yes, the single biggest item of import during the Vijayanagara Empire happens to be the horses. So the first statement is right. When we look into the second statement, Persian traveller Abdur Razak visited Vijayanagara. Yes, he did visit Vijayanagara, but it was not during the rule of Devaraya 1, but instead it was Devaraya 2. Now if we speak about Abdur Razak, he happened to be a Persian traveller who visited the capital city in the 15th century, described the city with the following words. The city of Vijayanagara is such that the pupil of the eye has never seen a place like it and the ear of intelligence has never been informed that there existed anything equal to it. So remember, there have been many other travellers as well. We also have Domingo Pace who happened to be a Portuguese traveller who visited the Vijayanagara Empire during the 1520. We also have Niccolo di Conti who happened to be an Italian merchant, explorer and writer who also visited visited Vijayanagara Empire. As part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section who are the other travellers who had visited Vijayanagara Empire during that particular period. Now let's look into the next practice question. Arrange the following from north to south. We have Swalbad, Janmayan, Faroe Island. Arrange them from the north to the south. So the answer to this would be 1, 2 and 3. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the Svalbard. So if we have to arrange them from the north to the south, what we have at first is the Svalbard. What is the Svalbard? This happens to be a Norwegian archipelago which is present in the Arctic Sea and in the year 1920 there was a treaty called as the Svalbard Treaty which basically ensured that this particular archipelago belongs to Norway. 
So remember, the Svalbard happens to be a archipelago which belongs to Norway and there was a treaty which was signed back in the year 1920. Then we have Jan Mayen which happens to be a Norwegian volcanic island in the Arctic Ocean and finally what we have is Foray Island which is also a self-governing nation under the sovereignty of the Kingdom of Denmark. So the earlier archipelago and the island was under the sovereignty of Norway but when it comes to the Foray Island it belongs to Denmark where it has the external sovereignty. So if we have to arrange from the north to the south, what we have as first is Svalbard, followed by Jan Mayen. Third, what we have is Foray Island and then we also have the Orkney Islands. The article further makes a mention of India's lone station in the Arctic region called as Himadri. It further makes a mention of the Arctic Council. The Arctic Council has following nations which include Canada, Denmark, Finland, Norway, Iceland, Russia, Sweden and United States. These are the eight countries which are part of Arctic Council and can probably asked in your preliminary examination. How was the Arctic Council established? We have the Ottawa Declaration which established the Arctic Council as a forum for promoting cooperation, coordination, interaction among the Arctic states. So what are the main focus areas of this Arctic Council? One is about environment and climate change. Second is about biodiversity. Third is about oceans. Fourth is about indigenous Arctic people and the Ottawa declaration explicitly excludes any military security and the Arctic Council is a forum with no enforcement powers as well. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. Now let's look into the next practice question. Boma technique recently seen in news is related to revolutionary concept of 4D technology, remote sensing method that uses light in the form of a pulse laser to measure ranges, luring of animals into an enclosure by chasing them through a funnel-like fencing, process by which a genetically identical copy of a certain bacteria, plant or animal is produced by asexual reproduction. Which of the statements best describes about BOMA technique? BOMA technique happens to be an African technique where it is used for luring of animals into enclosure by chasing them through a funnel-like fencing. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the BOMA capturing technique. So what is this Boma capturing technique? This is a practice that is generally followed in Africa. What exactly happens? Let's take for example, there is a forest area. In this forest area, what they would construct is an enclosure or a stockade or a fort-like structure wherein it is used to protect certain species of animals. So basically, it can be used to protect the livestock and at the same time, it can also be used to capture wild animals for training and services. How does it work? This will be like a funnel-like structure where animals would enter this particular structure and they would be protected from the external animals. So why is it in picture? That is because BOMA has been put to practice practiced for the first time right now in Rajasthan for sending the deer to the prey deficient Mukundara Reserve. Basically, we have the National Tiger Reserve Authority which has given approval to transfer two tigers from Ranthambore National Park to Mukundara. In Mukundara, they do not have enough prey base, they do not have enough deers. So what are they doing? They are making sure that they capture the deers using these BOMA techniques and ultimately from this particular place, it will be transferred to the Mukundara. Why is this project significant? That is because there is inadequate prey base in project tiger areas that has led to less breeding success. In order to increase the number of tigers in the near future, what they also require is the prey base, which is why they have taken up this initiative. So remember, when we speak about BOMA capturing technique, it is popular in Africa, which involves luring of animals into an enclosure by chasing them through a funnel-like fencing. Now let's look into the next practice question. With reference to Madanapalli of Andhra Pradesh, which one of the following statements is are correct? Pingali Venkaya, design the tricolor Indian national flag here. Patabi Sitaramaya, let the quit India movement of Andhra region from here. Rabindranath Tagore translated the national anthem from Bengali to English here. Madam Blavatsky and Colonel Olcott set up headquarters of Theosophical Society first here. What happened in Madanpalli of Andhra Pradesh? The answer to this is 
Rabindranath Tagore translated the national anthem from Bengali to English in this particular place. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is Parthapi Narmada River Linking Project. As the very name denotes, there are three rivers. One is the Par River. The other happens to be the Tapi River. The third happens to be the Narmada River. So this project is about interlinking all these three rivers. So basically, it proposes to link Par originating from Nashik in Maharashtra flowing through Walsad with Tapi from Satpura that flows through Maharashtra and Surat in Gujarat and Narmada originating in Madhya Pradesh and flowing through Maharashtra and Baruch and Narmada districts in Gujarat. So this is about connecting all these three rivers. What is the objective of the river linking project? This will basically transfer water from the surplus regions of West Bengal to the deficit regions of Saurashtra. What are other significant aspects when it comes to this project? The project aims to harness the excess water that flows into the sea by interlinking the rivers. This will also help in containing the flood-like situations in multiple places like Walsad, Navsari, Surat and Baruch. And added to it, the water which is now supplied to Saurashtra is through the Sardar Sarovar Dam. This can be saved and ultimately it can be used for multiple other purposes. And as part of this project, there will be multiple dams that will be constructed which includes Mohan Kavchali Dam, Jeri Dam, Paikit Dam, Chasmandava Dam, Chikar Dam, Dabdar Dam and Kelvan Dam. And when there is construction of the dam, there is acquisition of the land, this may also lead to submergence of the land in some other part as well. Whenever there is submergence, it means that people would be the major sufferers. According to the report by the National Water Development Agency, about 6065 hectares of land area will be submerged due to the proposed reservoirs. A total of 61 villages will be affected, of which one will be fully submerged and the remaining six partly. The total number of affected families would be 2509 of which 98 families would be affected due to the creation of the Jerry Reservoir, the only one in Maharashtra spread over 6 villages. In Gujarat, 793 families from 17 villages will be affected by Kelvan Reservoir, 563 villages by Dabdar Reservoir across 11 villages, 379 families from the Chashmandav Reservoir spread over 7 villages, 345 families would be affected by Chikar Reservoir across 9 villages and 331 families would be affected due to Paikid Reservoir spread over 11 villages. So basically, you have people from the tribal heartland, you have people in and around this particular village, they are apprehensive that they may be displaced, their lands would be taken away and as a result, what we have is these people protesting against this initiative. It is this that we have to understand in reference to this article. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.